when I went to Immaculata, an all-girls Catholic college about 400, it was supposed to be a low-key job, just something to keep me busy and occupied while Ed was out refereeing. And it obviously didn't turn out that way. We didn't even know in 1971 that there was going to be a national tournament. And so many women who went ahead of us, who had planned and wanted this to happen, uh, one of my players said, we, we went to the party of the national tournament and took it home and never gave it back. And I just thank everyone for giving, giving women now an equality of dreams, a chance to succeed in, in so many things. And I, and I was looking the other night, talking about breaking the glass ceiling. And I just think that young girls and young women now have people to look up to, idols that are also in team sports as well as individual sports. And I thank you for this. It's the greatest honor I could ever imagine. I never did dream it, but it's certainly a dream come true. Thank you. Greetings. Welcome to So Much to Talk About. My pleasure to have 2008 inductee coach Kathy Rush of Immaculata University. Thank you so much for being on. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And, um, talk about uh, you excelled so young at coaching and teaching. Talk about uh, how were you able to be so wise in your young years? Well, the first secret to success certainly is to have great players. And I had wonderful players. And so many people asked that I was a 22-year-old coach in a college environment. But if you go back to the 70s, and, and I laugh because I said Immaculata didn't get into the 70s until the 80s. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was a respect for authority. And no one questioned my ability to be there. I was always, in fact, at Immaculata, I was our Mrs. Rush. Our Mrs. Rush is this. And I had wonderful players. My championship team in 1972, all five players were commuters. And it's just an amazing thing that all these young women go to school, practice, and drive home, study, come back to school the next day. So it was a phenomenon that they still had that family environment and they weren't on college campuses quite like today. And I wanted to, to ask you too about um, you leaving early, what, the decision of leaving coaching early, like, uh, you know, you could have won 400, 500, 600 games. You could have been like the, the all-time women's uh, leader for, winner, for wins, but um, talk about uh, what made you leave so early. All right. In, in 1972, Title IX was passed by President Nixon, and what it did was, was give not an equal amount, but an equality of money for men's and women's programs. Immaculata is an all-girls Catholic college, so we had no program to match. And when I went to the president and the treasurer of the college and said, we need scholarships, we need money, these nuns said, no, we don't think so. So I knew that Immaculata's success was going to wane because everyone else Penn State, Connecticut, Tennessee, St. Joe's, Villanova were all offering scholarships. So in 77, I knew our run was going to be over. I actually thought I would get back into coaching after taking a year off. And I took a year off when my older son started kindergarten. And I said to my friends for the first time, I have afternoons, evenings, and weekends. It was a whole new thing. And at the same time, I had started an overnight basketball camp. And that became successful. And all of a sudden, I could work crazy for eight weeks in the summer, take the kids with me, and then have the rest of the time to be a mother. And we ended up skiing on weekends. And it was a combination. I said I was the grandmother of basketball because I had everyone's player for a week, and then I got to send them home. And I had the other 51 weeks all to myself. Question for you: uh, You defeated breast cancer and everything, and talk about um, you know to, uh, give your advice on on because if with you beating breast cancer, that's an inspiration to everybody. Talk about you know, how you can advise the audience on on how to persevere in life. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1990. My older son was a senior in college. Um, the day after the best football game he ever quarterbacked, I had to tell them that I was undergoing surgery. The cancer had already spread. I ended up doing six months of chemotherapy, lost every hair on my body, um, went through radiation. But I, I think of the Immaculata support and so many other women's support that I never lost faith. I, I was always convinced that I could fight this. It was just another battle that I had to fight. And I think I was very fortunate. And every day that I live, I think I've bought more time because of all the progress that has been made. And so many women, I think it's down to one in eight now, are diagnosed with breast cancer. And of course, early detection is key, but also positive outlook. You know, look for the bright sides and, and definitely laugh. One more 
more question because you're so captivating your answers everything about the women's game right now how how far your assessment on how it's progressed I could never imagine that the women's game has progressed this far this fast um, the support and, and my biggest thing is moms and dads love to see their young girls play and I think that that has changed our society and it's given women opportunities not only in basketball which is phenomenal right now but in every area of life and I think that's so important coach rush pleasure thank you. pleasure my to pleasure. interview my pleasure thank you